Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, we thank you for the ordinance you have given the church. We thank you for the remembrance of the bread and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, his body broken for us and the blood shed for us. We pray, o Lord, as you remind us of the benefits of the bread and the wine, we pray that the benefits will be ours in Jesus' name. We pray that you'll be with us in the study tonight. You remind us of the things we have known which we might be forgetting, and you remind us of your grace available for us so we can live the life you have called us to live. And we pray, Lord, that the blessing of obedience will belong to every one of us. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we come to study the word of God in 1 Corinthians. We're looking in at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're studying from verse 17 to verse 34. We we'll read verse 17. Look at verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. As you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, you will see that Paul the Apostle, by the Spirit of God, led to instruct them, to teach them, and to show them areas their lives are praiseworthy, and areas their lives are not quite praiseworthy. In verse 2 of 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2, it tells us in verse 2, telling us of the area their life was praiseworthy. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. What a pastor, what a father, and what a leader. He showed them areas where he praised them. He glorified God for them. He said, now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and you keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. And now you must tell them areas that need correction, areas that need transformation, areas that need a divine touch in their lives. That's why we come back to verse 17 now. He has shown them the area where he praised them and where he glorified God for them. Now he said, now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not. That she come together, not for the better, but for the worse. He said whenever they came together to worship the Lord, to hear the word of God, to pray unto the Lord, and to remember the ordinances and all the rites and all the things he left behind, they were coming together, in their own case at this time now, not for the better, not for progress, but for retrogression. He said they came for the wars, look at verse 22. In verse 22, it tells us what? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. He told them the good areas of their lives and the good response of their lives and the good reaction to the word of God and obedience to the word of God. And he said, I praise you. I glorify God on your behalf because you catch the word that I gave to you. But now in this area, he says, in this other side, on this other side, I cannot praise you because your coming together is not for the better, but for the worse. Actually, here he was re-establishing the divine order 
that Christ had given to the church and the revelation that God had given to him. He wanted to establish that divine order and revelation in the church at Corinth like he had done in all the other churches and like he wants to do in our church that the divine order and the divine revelation will be established and re-established in the midst of the children of God. Tonight we're looking at the message re-establishing the divine order and revelation. Re-establishing has been established before. It's been taught before, it's been revealed before, and it's been deemed into their ears. This is the divine order, but because they were going away from that, that's why he calls for the reestablishment of that divine order and of the revelation. We're looking at the study tonight under three perspectives, three points. Number one, declaring divine rebuke for re for regressing to looseness. They were becoming loose and lax, and because of that, he needed to declare the rebuke and then bring them to the place they ought to be, declaring divine rebuke for regressing to looseness. Point number two, delivering divine revelation as revealed from the Lord delivering and declaring and telling the people divine revelation the truth of God the word of God the might of God declaring that to them delivering that to them as he received such a revelation from the Lord delivering divine revelation as revealed from the Lord point number three discerning divine reproves and remedy from the Lord. He didn't just stop at rebuking them, at correcting them, at reproving them, but he brought the remedy to them so that they'll get away from where they had been, a place where they came for the worse and not for the better, and then transform them, transfer them, translate them to the place they ought to be, which is the place where they find recovery, and where they find the remedy, and where they find the restoration and reconnection with the Lord. Let's come to point number one. Point number one is declaring divine rebuke for regressing to looseness. We're coming to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, reading from verse 17. It says, Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that she come together, not for the better, but for the worse. In verse 18, it tells them, For first of all, when ye come together in the church, when ye come together in the church, they were coming together. They were assembling together and they were gathering together in the church and yet just coming is not enough. I hear that there be divisions among you and I partly believe it. In verse 19, it, it says, For there must, also, there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Verse 20 then, it tells us when you come together, therefore into one place this is not to eat the Lord's Supper that is to come with the mind you shall come and eat at the Lord's Supper and take the feast of the Lord but then your mind is not prepared and it says this attitude and this uh, composture is not to eat the Lord's Supper in verse 21 it says for in eating everyone take it before the other his own supper and one is hungry and and another is drunken in verse 22 it says what have ye not houses to eat and to drink in or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not what shall I say to you shall I praise you in this I praise you not in this section there are three things we're looking at number one divisions in the church with heresies 
divisions in the church with heresies. Number two, dishonor in the church his household. They forgot that the house of God, they forgot that the church of God is the household of God. And so they were dishonoring the Lord and dishonoring the church. Number three, disregard for his church and for holiness. They disregarded the real thing they ought to be celebrating and the real thing they ought to have in their lives. Let's look at number one, the visions in the church with heresies. Already we have read 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 17 to 19. And in verse 19 in particular, look at verse 19 now, it says, for there must be also heresies among you. There must be heresies among you. Why? So that they which are approved of God may be made manifest among you. Heresies were things and are things that are contrary to sound doctrine. They are false doctrine. They are false teaching. They are false ideas. And they are false uh, proposals among the people. And what does that do? Look at Second Peter chapter 2 reading from verse 1. First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 1. It tells us in First Peter chapter 2, Second Peter rather, Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies you understand that those heresies contrary to the word of god contradicted the doctrine of salvation and the doctrine of holiness and the doctrine of the power of the holy ghost and the doctrine that had been given to them they were not united in Corinth on those doctrines on the cardinal teachings of the word of God and there were heresies among them and the heresies brought some followers after those heretic people and it says there were those heresies and second peter is telling us there were false teachers in the old testament and there shall be false teachers among the new testament believers to so that the people that bring in damnable heresies they'll be spotted out what were those heresies it says even denying the lord that bought them and bring upon themselves sweet destruction they bring upon themselves swift destruction because of the heresies look at galatians chapter 5 reading from verses 20 and 21 galatians chapter 5 in verse 20 idolatry those are the works of the flesh witchcraft hatred various emulations rod strife seditions heresies heresies they are part of the works of the flesh they are not of grace they are not of faith they are not of the spirit it says in verse 21 in verse 21 envies murders drunkenness rebellions and such like now all these heresies included it says such like of the which i tell you before as i have also told you in time past that they which commit and they which do and with they which practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god in the church at in the church of corinth there were people that brought in heresies and he tells us when heresies come in all those who perpetrate those heresies all those who accept those heresies all those who believe those heresies all those who hold on to those heresies and they abandon the sound watch of god it says they shall not inherit the kingdom of god what are we to do? What's the church to do? What are the leaders in the church to do when there are people bringing in heresies? Titus chapter 3, we're reading from verse 9. In Titus chapter 3, looking at verse 9, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies. Avoid foolish questions. 
we don't answer all questions there are some leaders preachers pastors overseers that try to answer all questions and uh, some of the questions are hypothetical some of the questions are heretical some of the questions are blasphemous some of the questions will want to divert the minds of the people of god from the real truth and from the essential truth but now it says when those questions come avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain they pollute the minds of other people that were not thinking of those things before and because they are unprofitable and they are vain and they lead the minds of people into vanity they lead the minds of people into something unsound into something unscriptural into something unedifying it says we should avoid them look at verse 10 in verse 10 a man that is an heretic after the first and the second admonition reject that means count him as a backslider count him and as an apostate count him as an outsider and reject him you've answered his question you've counseled him you've enlightened him and he's still wanting to be a heretic after the first and the second admonition reject them from whatever they were doing in the church and reject them from whatever they were trying to you know trying to confuse other people reject them as outsiders as sinners as adamant as rigid as incorrigible backsliders now he tells us then uh, there shouldn't be divisions in the church there shouldn't be heresies in the church and there shouldn't be discord in the church there should be unity on the teaching of the word of god there should be unity on the truth that centers on uh, salvation and the life of the new creature we come to number two now in point number two it's dishonor in the the church is household the church of god is the household of god let's look at first corinthians chapter 11 verse 20 in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 20 when ye come together therefore into one place this is not to eat the lord's supper in verse 21 it says for in eating everyone take it before other before the other his own supper and one is hungry and another is drunken and what happened in the corinthian church in the corinthian church they were calm and as they came number one they actually came to eat and to take the lord's supper but instead of eating at home they will bring their food to the church and they called it love feast <clears throat> And in taking that love feast, some will bring their food. Other people that had no food, they'll come just like that. Those who had food to eat, they will eat. Almost be drunken. And then the other people, they stay hungry. And there was division in the church. Where is the love we're talking about? What the unity we're talking about? And Paul, the apostle, heard of that. And he said, in eating, everyone take it before the other. It's on supper. And one is hungry, and the other drunken. In verse 22. <clears throat> 22, it says, watch. Have you not houses to eat and drink or to and drink in or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for thee in this? I praise you not. Uh, the feast uh, we're talking about that they were taking uh, Jude alludes to that in Jude chapter 1 uh, reading from verse 12 Jude chapter 1 uh, reading from verse 12 these are spots in your feast of charity those feasts of charity 
came before actually the celebration of the Lord's Supper and there were people that came without any regard for the church of God without any respect for the church of God without any honor for the church of God and it said Jude tells us these people that come and they put the church to shame and they act in such a way as to show disregard and dishonor for the church these as Paul's in your feast of charity when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear clouds they are without water carried about of winds trees whose fruits wither it without fruit twice dead plucked up by the roots you see they had lost all the fruits of the spirit the love the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the meekness, the fidelity, all that they have lost, and the temperance and the self control. They couldn't control themselves. They'll just do whatever they wanted to do in the midst of the children of God. And some of them so became so bad that we're told in verse 13, in verse 13, reaching waves of the sea, forming their own shame wandering stars they'll go from place to place they go to that place they bring division the they go to another local church they bring division the they go to another church they bring division the they were wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever because the spirit was no more being edified all they were concerned about was their own belly in romans chapter 16 verse 18 romans chapter 16 reading from verse 18 for they that are such sat not our lord jesus christ they are for heresies they are for division they are for argument they are for strife they are for false doctrine they are for scattering they are not serving the lord they that are such sat not our lord jesus christ but their own belly their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple he tells us in philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 18 philippians chapter 3 verse 18 for many walk of whom i have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. And then in verse 19, it says, Whose edge is destruction? Whose God is their belly? Whose glory is in their shame? And the mind earthly things. Let's look at number three now. In number three, disregard for his church and for holiness. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we're reading from verse 22. It says, Watch, have ye not houses to eat and to drink in, or despise ye the church of God in their action? They had no regard for the church of God in their action, in their behavior, in what they were doing. They put the church of God to shame. You should ask yourself as you come to the house of God, your behavior, your action, and your response to the watch of God and the things you do in the church, in the presence of the other children of God, are these things saints should do or are these things sinners will do? Are these things those who are interested in the word of God should be doing? Or are these things that those who are opposed to the teaching of the word of God should be doing? Do you do anything to despise the church of God, the members of the church, the ministers of the church, and to despise the message of the word of God coming to us? And you shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Our calling is a calling to hear the word of God. A calling to pray and establish the holiness of God in our hearts. And when that is despised, then such people become 
part of the heretical people, backsliding people, and apostate people that despise, disregard the church of God and the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 4, reading from verse 7. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, reading from verse 7, it says, For God has called us not has not called us to uncleanness but unto holiness he calls the ministers to holiness he calls the members to holiness he calls the new converts to holiness he calls all new creatures to holiness he calls the whole church whether it's the church at corinth or the church at philippi or the church in rome or the church over here at the headquarters of the church anywhere in any generation and every generation for god has not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness look at verse 8 in verse 8 he therefore that despises we're reading about the corinthians by their action by their drunkenness by their worldliness and by their disregard for the house of god by their disregard for the things of god they were not honoring the holiness message that god had given to the church they were despising the preachers they were despising their pastors they were despising the preaching and it says he therefore that despiseth this the despised not man but god who has called who has also given us of his holy spirit it tells us in amos chapter 2 reading from verse 4 amos chapter 2 from verse 4 thus says the lord for three transgressions of judah and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have despised the law of the Lord. They have despised the word of the Lord. They have despised the doctrine of the Lord. They have despised the message of the Lord that is sent through the prophets, the messengers of God. It says, because they have not kept his commandments and their lies caused them to err. Their lie, their deception caused them to err from the path of righteousness and the path of holiness after the which their fathers have walked they were copying some people that were above them that were senior to them that were even their fathers and as they copied them they went away from the right way and from the proper way and from the scriptural way that the lord had given unto them in james chapter 2 reading from verse 5 james <clears throat> chapter 2 reading from verse 5 Hakim, my beloved brethren have not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him and then in verse 6 it tells us but she have despised the poor that's what they were doing in the Corinthian church. The rich will bring their food and they will each finish all, finish all their food without remembering the poor. And they despised the poor. And the life of the believer was no more being manifested. And they put the poor and the, sh and the church, they put them to shame. It says, but she have despised the poor. Do not reach men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats. The correction was being made and they were being told as to what to do. Now he has dealt with the heresies and divisions and misbehavior that they were manifesting in the house of God. It's now coming to the Lord's Supper. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, delivering divine revelation as received from the Lord delivering divine revelation as received from the Lord look at first Corinthians chapter 11 
We're reading from verse 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. He says, what I've delivered to you is exactly what I received from the Lord. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. And then he spoke about the Lord's Supper. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, revelation delivered as received. Revelation delivered as received. He didn't take anything away. He didn't add anything. Just as he received from the Lord, he gave unto them. Revelation delivered as received. Number two, Redeemer remembered as requested. The Lord had requested of the church that they will do this in remembrance of him. And now the, the Redeemer must be remembered as he requested. Number three, his return declared repeatedly. As often as he ate this bread and drank this cup, he do show the Lord's a death till he come. He's coming again and his return is declared repeatedly as they took the Lord's Supper. Let's come to number one. Number one, revelation delivered as received. We're coming to First Corinthians chapter 11, the first part of verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That's what every preacher should be able to say. That what we're, de what we're delivering to the church is what we have received from the Lord. We shouldn't add our own tribal idea. We shouldn't add our own tradition. We shouldn't add our own culture. We shouldn't add our own supposition. We shouldn't add our own mind. Exactly what we have received from the Lord, that is what we give to the people. Why? Because it's that revelation that saves. Because it's that revelation that grants us faith and grants us grace. And then we're able to have the benefit of the redemption of the Lord. That's why we don't add because what we add will be like a drop of poison in a glass of clean water. That water then becomes uh, undrinkable. You can't drink that anymore because of that little drop. What we take away, the nutrient will take away, and the part will take away, will then make it incomplete, insufficient, that it cannot save anymore. That's the reason why the revelation is delivered exactly as it was received. Look at First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're looking at verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. You see that? That's what every preacher should do. That's what every faithful uh, prophet, preacher, proclaimer of the gospel should do. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. I received it, it saved me, I give it to you, it will save you. I received it, it sanctified me, I give it to you, it will sanctify you also. I, I received it, it brought blessing to my life, I give it back to you, and it will bring blessing to your life. I, I received it, and it's preparing me for glory, and I give it to you, and it will prepare you for glory. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And then in verse 4, in verse 4 it says, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The revelation received was according to the scriptures. You cannot have any revelation and say, that's what I received. Even though it contradicts the scripture, it must abide, it must remain faithful to the scripture. Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 11. 
Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which I which uh, was preached of me is not after man. In verse 12, it tells us, For I neither received the age of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Christ. By the revelation of Christ. Christ revealed it to him. Christ gave it to him and he gave it to the church faithfully. Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Look at verse 19. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now he told them in verse 20 what he will teach, what he will give to the church, and what he will give to the people as they go to teach them, as they go to preach the word of salvation to them and the gospel unto them. He said teaching them to observe all things, no addition, no subtraction, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. All the teaching, all the transforming uh, doctrine of the word of God that Christ had taught, he said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the church of God said, Amen. Amen. We'll come to number two now. Number two, Redeemer remembered as requested. We're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night, in which he was betrayed, he took bread, verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. That's what he requested that they should do. We should do this in remembrance of him. He is the Redeemer. He is the Savior. He is our Savior. He is our substitute in the final sacrifice. His body was broken for us. His blood was shed for us. And he says we should remember that. Remember his death. And remember the purpose of that death. The salvation it brings. The holiness it brings. The redemption it brings. And we remember all the blessings Calvary brings until he comes. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25. In verse 25, after the same manner also, he took the, bread, he took the cup. And when he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as ought as ye drink it in remembrance of me. That he had given that to the church. He instituted that Lord's Supper. And then he told the church, he told those disciples, and then the disciples passed that on to us. And he said, Until he comes, let that keep on being observed, be remembered. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 26. In verse 26, for as often as ye age, eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the lost death till he come. Till he come. We keep on doing that until he comes. Number three now. Number three is his return declared repeatedly we keep on doing that often and often and often he didn't tell us whether it should be done every day every week every month every quarter 
or once a year he left that in the hands of the church but he said we should do it as often as necessary until he comes number three his return declared repeatedly his return declared repeatedly revelation chapter 2 verse 25 revelation chapter 2 we're looking at verse 25 it says that which ye have already hold fast till i come everything we have everything that has been revealed the doctrines of the world hold fast till i come and the life of grace that he has given us that righteousness that redemption that purity of heart and holiness without which no man shall say the lord you have that already hold fast till i come christian experiences of peace with god and purity in christ and the power of the holy ghost that which ye have hold fast till i come don't change the doctrine and don't change the revelation and don't change the teaching it says we have it already hold fast until i come we're looking at revelation chapter 3 verse 11 revelation 3 verse 11 behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown hold it fast and he repeats again he's coming he's coming again his return is declared repeatedly in revelation chapter 16 verse 15 revelation chapter 16 verse 15 behold i come as a thief blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and you see a shame chapter 22 of revelation revelation 22 verse 7 behold i come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the sins of the prophecy of this book look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says behold and behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be and then look at verse 18 in verse 18 it says for i testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things god shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book is warning us everything we have received the revelation we have received we keep that revelation until it comes there's no addition there's no subtraction if any man shall add unto these things god shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book verse 19 in verse 19 and if any man shall take away if any man shall diminish if any man shall subtract from the words of the book of this prophecy god shall take away his part out of the book of life and all those uh, preachers all those ministers that think they have the liberty to tamper with the word of god they can add they can subtract and then they bring their own authority and they say i tell you i'm a man of god i tell you i'm a woman of god this one you have read here i don't accept that this is what i accept and they add to the word and they subtract from the word if anyone shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy god shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book look at verse 20 in verse 20 he will testify this he says surely i come quickly and the church said amen even so come lord jesus that coming we ought to repeat every time 
as often as possible because he said as you do this ye do remember the death of christ until he comes we come to point number three now point number three discerning divine reproofs and remedy from the lord we're reading from first corinthians chapter 11 verse 27 wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the lord what does that mean the people that come and they disregard they dishonor and they divide the church of god they trample on the doctrines of christ and they reject and they abuse and they misuse and they add or they subtract from the revelation of christ and in doing that not accepting everything christ has given not respecting not honoring the body of christ and the body of the teaching of the doctrine he has given us and then they just take the lord's supper the way they want not the way christ himself has instituted those are the people that drink unworthily they have sins in their lives they have not taken that sin to the cross of christ to calvary and they have not taken that to the redeemer to be forgiven they have disunity they have division they have sedition they have heresies they have false doctrine they have, they have misbehavior they have uncleanness they have unrighteousness and they just take the lord's supper they say uh, that's my right he died for me and he said do this in remembrance of me and they don't check up their lives and they don't clean up their lives and they don't put themselves in the way they ought to be they are so or sources of division in the house of god in the body of christ and yet they go to take the lord's supper wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the lord three things we're looking at here number one the directives on self-examination the directives on self-examination where do i stand in the lord where do i stand with the watch of god am i abiding in the christian experience of salvation or do I have uncleanness, defilement, transgression, iniquity in my life? Is there something you know, I should take to Calvary and allow the blood of Jesus to wash and to cleanse? We need to examine ourselves, the directives on self-examination. Number two, the discernment of the sufferer's experiences. There are children of god they are members of the church that suffer they suffer in affliction they suffer in sickness they suffer in oppression they suffer in uh, in some in many many ways and then uh, the lord is saying we should check up and have a discernment of why we suffer of those experiences of suffering uh, that we're going through number three our deliverance and destiny after sin's elimination after we eliminate sins we eliminate sins from our lives eliminate transgression from our lives eliminate a falsehood from our mouth eliminate guile from our lives then we can come and he delivers us and then he points us to the destiny we have as redeemed ransomed righteous cleansed children of god let's look at number one number one the directives on self-examination let's look at verse 28 in verse 28 but let a man examine himself the minister examine himself 
the preacher examine himself the workers examine themselves and the members examine themselves let every child of god examine himself let a man let a woman examine himself let her examine herself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup now the people that never examine themselves and the people that always have sent themselves from the lord's supper it shows they know something is wrong but they're not willing to put it right they know they should go to Calvary and be cleansed and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. They should reconcile with their brother, reconcile with their wife, reconcile with their husband. They should reconcile with whoever they have offended. They are not willing to do that. And so they say, I'll not examine myself. I'll not put anything right. I will not take the Lord's Supper. What disqualifies you for the Lord's Supper? will disqualify you for the rapture what disqualifies you for the lord's supper will disqualify you for the marriage supper of the lamb and the best thing to do is to make yourself fit for the lord's supper examine yourself and whatever you have discovered get them corrected and the mercy of the lord will be for every one of us in jesus name let me hear a good amen now second corinthians chapter 13 we're reading from verse 5. second corinthians chapter 13 we're reading from verse 5 examine yourselves examine yourselves whether you be in the faith whether you are still in the faith in the faith that saves in the faith that sanctifies in the faith that receives blessings from the lord in the faith and the family of god examine yourselves whether ye you be in the faith prove your own selves know ye not your own selves how that jesus christ is in you Christ in you, the hope of glory, and you in Christ, a new creature. Examine yourself. Am I still a new creature? Are old things passed away in my life? Am I following uh, the new path of righteousness? Am I walking in the narrow way that leads to heaven? Or have I gone back to the old lifestyle and to the broad way? Am I now in the world and the world in me? Or am I still in the faith? In the faith, active faith that believes the Lord and the faith that makes me to walk according to the word of the Lord. Examine yourself how the Christ is in you. Except ye be reprobates. I pray none of us will be reprobates in Jesus' name. Hey, look at number two now number two the discernment of the surprise experiences we're looking in at first corinthians chapter 11 we're reading from verse 29 first corinthians chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 29 for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily he that eateth and drinketh unworthily he has animosity, hatred against some members of the body of Christ. He has uh, unforgiving spirit against members of the body of Christ. He has secret sin that is covering up. He's living in guilt. He's living in condemnation. He's li living in, in a besetting sin and sins that come frequently he doesn't ever resist temptation they come he falls into it she falls into it and yet she's eating the lord's supper for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself damnation to himself not discerning the lord's body not discerning the purpose of the broken body that he appeared to take away sin and in him is no sin at all and he does not discern the reason why christ died on the cross of calvary 
that he shall bring forth his son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins and he's not saved from sin he was saved before he's gone back into sin again not discerning the purpose of the Lord's body then he tells us in Bastachi it says for this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep because of taking uh, that Lord's Supper the body the emblem and the blood the emblem he takes that unworthily because of that he's sickly and because of that he's weak it's almost like you know sickness sickness upon sickness and he doesn't know why well somebody said i didn't take the lord's supper and i'm still sick yes because you have not recognized the purpose of his body that was broken for you on the cross of calvary you have not discovered the purpose why he had all those tribes by his tribes were healed you pray and pray and pray but you never discern the body of christ and the blood of christ you never discern that already he has borne all the shame all the affliction and he carried all your pain away prayer without discernment of the purpose of christ's death will not go far and it says because of this many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep i want to remind you that this is the corinthian church and they didn't lack any of the gifts of the spirit they are the gifts of the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and the sending of spirits they had the gift of the working of miracles and of the gift of faith and also the gifts of healing they had tongues and interpretation and prophecy and yet with all those gifts many of them were physically weak and many of them were sickly and many of them even died prematurely because those individuals did not discern the body and the blood of the lamb is telling us the reason why people suffer is telling us the reason why many people go through a lot of things they go through i pray as we discover the purpose of the shedding of the blood of the lamb and the way he gave his body to be beaten for our healing i pray the healing will come to us in jesus name that's all your amen I were coming to Psalm 107, reading from verse 17. Psalm 107, verse 17. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. It says we're fools when we know Christ and still we continue in transgression. When we know the Savior and yet we continue in sin. When we know that he has the power to save and to destroy the works of the devil. And yet we continue in iniquity. He said we're fools. And he says because of transgression and because of iniquities we are afflicted. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. And they draw near unto the gates of hell, of, of death, because of the transgression. In Job chapter 33, reading from verse 19. Job chapter 33, verse 19. He is just also with pain upon his bed. And the multitude of his bones was strong pain. Verse 20. It says, so that his life abhorreth bread. He loses appetite. He cannot eat because affliction, because sickness, and because of the pain that he has. His soul didn't meat. That is, he abhors even good food. In verse 21, it says, his flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen is bones that were not seen they stick out then it says in verse 22 
he tells us, Yea, his soul draws near unto the grave and his life to the destroyers. Verse 23 tells us, If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show man his uprightness. You know what that is saying? A brother is sick, a sister is sick, and the brethren that go there, let us pray, let us pray. They never tell those who are sick, what's the cause of this sickness? Have you prayed to the Lord? Do you have discernment? Have you discovered anything? Have you examined yourself? Is there something wrong somewhere? Are you a source of division? Are you a source of disagreement in your family, in the house of God? Why is this coming unto you? The people who try to help the sick, let us pray, let us pray. They don't ask questions. They don't understand why the sickness, why the suffering is coming upon them. But it says in verse 23, if there be a messenger with him, an interpreter who can interpret the experience the sufferer is going through, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness. Verse 24, it says, Then is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. There are people that pray, pray, pray. They don't show the sick man the way of redemption. They don't show the sick person, the redeemer, the healer, and what the Christ of Calvary has provided for us. They don't remind the people and convince the people by his tribes were healed. They just say, let us pray, let us pray. But you show them the source, what might be the source of the sickness, you let them examine themselves and you show them Christ, the healer, the redeemer, our ransom and then in verse 25 it says his flesh shall be fresher than the child's he shall return to the days of his youth when you examine yourself and you discover what is wrong and you take that to the Lord in prayer and he forgives you and he sets you free and he cleanses you and turns around everything and then you're on praying ground you're able to pray you're able to manifest faith and as you hold on to the lord what he did on the cross of calvary you discover his body you discover the purpose of his death you discover you discern the purpose of those tribes then he becomes your redemption and your redeemer he heals you and then you return to the days of your youth verse 26 it says he shall pray unto god and he will be favorable unto him self-examination after that, you discern the reason and the cause for the suffering, for the sickness. Then it says you can pray then. After that, and you pray in faith, and he shall pray unto God, and he shall be favorable unto him. He shall see his face with joy. I will see his face with joy. For he will render unto man his righteousness. Verse 27, it tells us, He looketh upon man, and if any say, I have sinned, when he has examined himself, and he has discovered the reason of his suffering, and the reason of his sickness, and the reason of his affliction, and he comes to God, he says, I've examined myself, I've discovered the reason why I suffer, and he says, I have seen, I have perverted that which was right, and it profited me not. Verse 28, it says, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. I pray the promises of God will be yes and amen in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Numbers chapter 21, we're reading from verse 5. Numbers 21, 
reading from verse 5 and the people speak against God and against Moses wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no bread neither is there any water and our soul loathes this light bread look at that they said for there is no bread and then at the end of the sentence our soul loathed this light bread they despised the provision of god they say this is nothing this is not good what came from heaven they said we don't like this one and they say there's no bread give us something we'll enjoy we don't enjoy this one coming from heaven our soul loathed this light bread and look at that they said neither is there any water but if you go back to just one chapter backwards chapter 20 god brought water out of the rock for them and yet they said and there's no water and because of that lying because of that deception because of despising the provision of God and because of using their tongue in a way they should not use their tongue. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and the Lord said, Fiery serpents among the people. And they beat the people. And much people of Israel died. But you see, when those things happen, when calamities come, when affliction comes, when premature death comes, and when all those uh, calamities came upon them, they should examine themselves and discover why this came upon them. And when they discovered, then they will confess. It's not just pray, pray, pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. And yet after the prayer, because there's no self-examination and because we're not discovering the reason and the cause for our affliction, for our suffering, the calamity continues. It says, the beach, the people, and much people of Israel died. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, therefore, the people came to Moses and they said we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee pray unto us they examined themselves they found the reason for their suffering and they confessed and they turned away from their sin and from their evil and from the misuse of their tongue after that they said pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us and Moses prayed for the people verse 8 and the Lord said unto Moses take thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is beating when he looketh upon it shall live verse 9 it says in verse 9 and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole and it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man anyone when he beheld the serpent of brass he lived the Lord provided solution I pray the Lord provi will provide solution to all our problems in Jesus' name. Look at number three now. Number three, our deliverance and destiny after sin's elimination. When we eliminate sin, then we'll have deliverance. And then we'll have a glorious destiny. First Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, if we will discipline ourselves, if we will correct ourselves, if we will turn away personally from all the transgressions and from all the iniquities that have come into our lives, if we will correct our misbehavior or our behavior if we will judge ourselves we should not be judged what do you see from that 
if you will go to the Lord every time, examine yourself, and then you see any deficiency, you see any iniquity, you see any sign of backsliding, and you correct that yourself, and you are cleansed, and you are washed, and you are restored. Church discipline will not be necessary. And other people, leaders, discipline will not be necessary. It says, if we will judge ourselves, correct ourselves, discipline ourselves, we should not be judged. We should not have public correction. And we should not be disciplined in verse 32. Verse 32 says, but when we are judged, we are chastised, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. The reason why God allows all those things to come upon those who have gone astray and the hunger and the famine is biting on the prodigal son that went to the far country is to make him come back to himself, recollect himself and say, why am I suffering here? It is my fault. I'll go back to my father. I will say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. And then he took that initiative. He rose up and he was coming. And as the father saw him afar off, the father ran and fell on him and kissed him. And the son said, I have sinned. I've examined myself. I know I'm the one at fault. And before he finished him on the confession, the father said he was forgiven. Bring the best robes and the food he has not eaten for months. Now was set before him and the ring of authority was given unto him and he was received the Again into the family deliverance came the light came for him and his destiny was turned around and his sins were eliminated and I pray that same favor the Lord will grant unto every one of us in Jesus name and then he says when we are judged we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world when we suffer that affliction and that uh, sickness and that um, uh, oppression and then we examine ourselves and we go back to the Lord then we will not be chastened again or condemned again with the world and when the Lord will come praise the Lord your sins are forgiven praise the Lord your life is turned around and you will go with him in Jesus name and then after that there is correction now and the things that we did that brought us into that affliction into that weakness into that sickly uh, experience and into that uh, premature death that thing is corrected look at verse 33 it says now wherefore my brethren after all that has been corrected now when you come together to eat tarry one for another all that hurry hurry tarry for one another all that uh, you know taking the meal before other people come tarry one for another all that drunkenness when others are hungry tarry ye one for another you are born the chastisement you are born the correction you have examined yourself you have seen the reason why all the chastisement is coming and you have corrected it and the Lord has pardoned you and the Lord has now shown favor unto you don't continue in those things that brought the calamity unto you tarry one for another and then in verse 34 now verse 34 and if any man hunger let him stay back at home and eat at home that she come not together unto condemnation condemnation is gone already don't allow the condemnation to come back anymore the rest will I set in order when I come and the church said the blessings of the Lord abide in your life and all the correction the Lord has made the Lord give you grace to put that correction into place in your personal life again in Jesus name and where there was sickness there will be healing 
where there was calamity there will be freedom and where there is any kind of oppression there will be total deliverance for everyone anyone in Jesus name and where judgment has been coming the Lord will show mercy and reverse the judgment and the goodness of God and the grace of God and the power of God will turn away every suffering from your life in Jesus name and the Lord will help you to forget all those past things and a new life will come and a new vitality will come and a new strength will come and the power of the cross will take away every power of evil and confusion in your life in Jesus name darkness is gone and light has come you have made the correction you are making the correction and all the blessings of Calvary will be poured upon every life in Jesus name what are the candidates for the blessing what are the candidates for the beautiful things God is willing to do let's rise up now and let's talk to the Lord in prayer remember everything the Lord has revealed don't suffer unnecessarily Calvary has paid all the price and Calvary has given us everything we need come to the Lord come to the Lord if anything is wrong just say Lord I'm sorry I discovered this I discovered this I discovered that and the favor the goodness of God the forgiveness of God God and redemption of God will come in full in your life in Jesus name